Damn. What's up, everybody? Welcome to Data Tonight Live. Aren't you glad that you're here? I can't hear you. No, I told myself I wouldn't be corny tonight, uh, but also I can't hear you. Could you, if you could do me a favor and turn on your cameras and your microphones so we can hear each other. Oh, what's up, Brooke? What's up, Brooke? Hey, Kyle. How are you? That, don't we feel like we're a part of something? Don't you feel like you're in like a, uh, I don't know, just high school again? Can we, is everybody here? This feels like very much like Hollywood Squares, which I, this is not, this is not a joke. This, that was one of my favorite shows when I was a kid. I would like, and I really thought that I could be on Hollywood Squares one, one day. I don't think it's running anymore. So this is as close as I could get. Um, welcome <laughs> to the show. I don't know what you guys, I don't, um, oh, I I'm going a little crazy. I hope that I am talking to people who understand. I did something real stupid. This what? I, okay, <laughs> I I started. I'm out in the world. You understand? I'm I'm expo I'm getting. I'm talking to people in face, real face. That's very irresponsible. I'm dating is what I'm doing. I'm trying to get out into the. Uh, I picked, okay, I didn't date for like three years. I was like, work on the career, work on the career. I picked the second peak of the biggest pandemic the world has ever seen to just be like, I wonder what's going on out there. <laughs> <laughs> Can I, <laughs> and somebody, huh? it's cause I'm scared. I don't wanna like, you know what I mean? I don't wanna, I'm, I'm like afraid. There's like so much that I don't know. This, on my dating profile, this is what it says. It says, uh, Yes, I am just trying to get you into bed, but mostly so you can hold me while I cry. You know, that's what, that seemed like something that would do. I think people are wanting that. I think people out there want that. There's somebody that needs that. <laughs> no, uh, no sex. No, it's not. Um, but I'm trying to get. I'm trying. I don't. Uh, this is this is different for me. I don't drink anymore, and I haven't. I'm dating now. And if you don't drink, if you're on a date and they are drinking and you're not, it makes the sexual consent, like getting, it's like, diff, it's an issue, you know? You gotta be, I would say like, you have to be on the same page. You have to communicate. You have to have a notary public with you at this point, you know what I mean? At least something, somebody to fill out the paperwork just to be like, you are having a good time, right? I will get you another beer. If you could just check the box, yes, this is okay. <laughs> I don't know. Um, <laughs> sex is also harder if you don't drink because I don't have anything to blame it on if it doesn't go well, you know? <laughs> it's nice if it, you're like, no, babe, I'm not too drunk. I'm just not good. Eh, okay. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. I'm trying. I'm very, I'm trying. I'm trying to pay. I'm trying to like, I'm trying to be a good like partner. I'm trying to learn how to listen. Uh, I can't. I'm trying real hard and I, I try not to ask the question, what do you do for a living? Because I don't know what it is probably, right? I can't, if I go on another date with somebody who's like an innovation analyst, I don't know what that is, you know? Oh, I'm a data creative. I don't think you could just make up data. I think that's illegal, <laughs> first of all. I don't know. <laughs> I'm just like, no, what do you do like, during your day? Are you like a typey typey? Are you a talky talky? Like, what do you? <laughs> oh, you go to meetings and you send emails. Fantastic. That's what I'll tell. What if my dad calls? What does she do? I don't know. She talks. She's a talky typey. That's what she is. <laughs> you go to school for that? Probably. It's probably a degree. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what I do this. This is I, I don't, I don't, you know, you work in an office. Fine. I feel like I do. My biggest problem is I fall in love too fast, you know, and they don't, they don't always, I, I fall in love and I just completely disregard any red flag. And there are several like this while I'll walk in and she, her apartment or something and she'll have like tarot cards. I'll smell burning hair. <laughs> she'll be like bowing in front of a crystal like me 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 and i'm like ooh, a witch this will be fun you know what i mean get get out what are you still doing there get out i'm like no she's it's the eyes i get like mesmerized by the eyes i don't know <laughs> but i'm not gonna get rid like this is what i the, my thing with like I, I, i'm treating online dating like i treat online shopping and i think that's a problem Cause I'm never, I never give, I'm not gonna 
return anything. It, if, it, if I get something, like it doesn't matter if whatever I've gotten from the internet, whether it's a lamp, a bookshelf, or a girlfriend, I, I get it in my house and I'm like, oh, it's not exactly what I was looking for. And then it just stays <laughs> there for three years, you know? Because <laughs> <laughs> I'm not gonna, you know, I do, I do notice this, if I, it sucks if you're really into them and they're not into you because you do stupid things. Like I'll buy, I'll buy them like candy versions of what I really want to get them, like a ring pop, a candy necklace, <laughs> a gingerbread house, you know? And then she'll be because I've given her cavities or diabetes, something even worse. <laughs> um, fine. Um, this is what, one good thing. This is good about be, being in quarantine. I, I live in Los Angeles, by the way. And every, Los Angeles is famous for like being fake and being like, oh, you got a network, you got a network. So that's my favorite thing about the quarantine is that I don't have to network as much anymore. Because if you... Networking basically, you know what it is? You know what a lot of it is, especially in Los Angeles? It's, it's dudes asking dudes out. That's what it is, right? If there's nothing more awkward than a straight man asking another straight man if he wants to go on a date. You know what I'm saying? And I have to do that a lot. I'm so glad I don't have to do that right now. I'm just in my house. Just going, I don't know. I don't know what they're doing. <laughs> you have to ask. If you're a dude, you ask, this is what you do. You go, hey, man, you want to get a beer sometime? There's a script. You got to stick to the script. One time I got off script. I go, hey, do you like museums? He goes, what did you just say to me? <laughs> <laughs> no, you got to get back to the script. And you and go with beer. I don't drink beer anymore, but you still offer beer. I go, do you want to get a beer? And then I awkwardly switch it to coffee. And that sucks because I got to go, you like, uh, you like beer? What about coffee? It's like morning beer. No, the answer is no. We don't want to get coffee with you. Coffee's dumb. Beer's cool. Beer's got like, beer basically has like a, there's a vibe to beer. It's like cool. It's comfort, you know, it's confident. Coffee has a vibe, but it's more of just like, so what are your goals? And that's stupid. <laughs> <laughs> stupid. Oh. What are you doing? No great, there's no great story that starts with coffee it all starts with beer you know what i mean no great like fun story started at starbucks and ended in vegas it doesn't happen <laughs> the way it works. um let's see i do have i'm trying I, my mom i really this is exciting for me because my mother is in the audience tonight so let's talk about it right who cares uh <laughs> yes i'm here <laughs> this is why I had the microphones turned on. My mother's a very sweet lady. She's a wonderful lady. Let me I'll tell you a little bit about her. She's she's one of these people. She sends me like she'll send me twenty dollars and a card every minor holiday, which is fine. It's wonderful, and I think the idea is like buy yourself something nice. But I think we both know it's pay for something you desperately need. <laughs> the underlying the underlying idea is like you need it and i know you do he's like, no, i'll get the toothpaste this month pal you know and i have to i always act surprised i'm like 20 dollars. you didn't have to do that even though it's been worked into my budget for weeks <laughs> <laughs> now, i'm like oh is it april that's easter okay i'm, I'm gonna eat some uh, you know something besides rice <laughs> Have you ever, you guys ever do this? Have you ever lied to your parents about how much money you make and then realize that your mother does your taxes? You ever do that one? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, mom, I sold a screenplay. It's great. <laughs> and it's just Uber receipts. You don't know how Hollywood works, mom. It takes a while to see the money. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> just, I'm saying, I don't like, I don't need to be a rich man. I just need enough money to like walk into a room and just go, hey guys, I'm going to the store. Does anybody need anything? Without risking financial. <laughs> Can I have that? That's not too much to ask. That's what I do Christmas, by the way. Christmas Eve when I'm at my family, I just go and I go, uh, I go, hey guys, I'm going to the store. Does anybody need anything? And then whatever they say, that's their Christmas present. That's what I <laughs> Was that mom needing a couple pie crusts? Yeah, I'll get that for you. I can't wait to see your face when you open that Christmas morning. <laughs> we'll be fine. It's going to be fine. The economy's going to come back. We're all going to 
become rich and famous and uh, we'll accomplish our goals, right? Can we believe in that? Yeah? Can we yes. maybe get a little round of applause for that? <laughs> Uh, Jason, thanks for having me on the show, man. This is fun. I'm ha this has been the highlight of my quarantine so far. I will tell you that. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna stop talking. I'm gonna get to keep the show going and introduce. We have a wonderful musical guest for you from Austin, Texas. Before I say his name, just real quick, can you turn off your uh, cameras and your microphones so you can enjoy the uninterrupted music of Mr. Daniel Thomas Phipps? And I'm back. What's up, everybody? How we doing? Is everybody still there? It's Ross Copeland, still talking to the screen, still talking to the people. If you could, oh, there's a, Joel, send a thumbs up. Great job. Uh, if you could do me a favor, put on your the, the, the participation things where the your microphone, what's the word? Microphone, camera. Uh, I just get lonely, that's all. I'm in this, stu look at this beautiful studio that, that I'm in, <laughs> that we built, Jason uh, sent me the parts for. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'm trying, I'm trying to do, am I in a safe space, first of all? Can I say something that's kind of touchy? Yeah, thumbs up. My mother has the thumb, her thumb over the camera. Hi, mom. <laughs> It's fine. She's fine. I just want to say it's a little bit tricky. I just want to say I'm a little bit like it's about women. Okay. I feel like women get away with saying right. things like that looks aren't important or as important as they are to men. And I just think it's kind of bullshit. And I'm tired of you guys acting like you're not superficial, really. Because this is what I feel like a woman. Women are like the admissions board to a university. You know, they act like they're like, we want to see the whole person. What we want to see is GPA, is a community service. But as soon as a football coach walks in, it's like, this guy's got a great body. The women are like, scholarship. You know what I mean? You guys are just that thought. Can... I think the woman I'm dating likes me for my chin. Is what I. That's where that came from. You know. <laughs> What about my personality? She's like, just less talking. Just let me, see, you know. Okay. like <laughs> a <laughs> um, uh, It's not. This is not open mic night. <laughs> I love you very much. <laughs> I, uh, I think the pro. I think my problem is that I take pride too much pride in my past accomplishments. You know, like I'm a little bit cocky because I'll say things. I'll go like, I should. I went to college. I should be able to figure this out. As if college is that big of a deal. You know, I should just say like, I was drunk for four years in a hoodie I never washed. I should be able to figure this out, right? <laughs> no. That's I feel this, I think life is basically trying to learn a board game while three people explain the rules at the same time. You guys feel that a little bit? <laughs> You're just like, no, shut up. No, you talk. No, don't talk. You talk. And then, and then there's like one guy in the back. He's like, that's not how we play it in Ohio. You're like, you'll never do it. <laughs> I'm, I'm never going to, you know what I mean? I'm not going to figure it out. <laughs> Are you guys excited? Are you bragging to people about how much weight you've gained during quarantine? I am. <laughs> It's the only thing I've accomplished, you know, I'm like, yeah, I'm up 20 pounds. You good. I'm doing it right. looks like I'm doing it right. I, I this surprises me. I'm so, like, we know information, right? We have information about sugar and fat and nutrition. Yet we go to the grocery store and there's still two aisles of sugar cereal, which I'm happy about, but I'm confused that we're still allowed to buy it. Like without some sort of identification, it's just every, you know what I mean? I feel like I just look, I just saying, I feel like there should be a like a warning on the sugar cereal, you know? Like at the very least, maybe give Captain Crunch a peg leg. Could we do that? You know what I mean? Just something, just so we're like, what's wrong with his leg? Did he lose it to diabetes? Is that what it is? <laughs> this is a heads up, you know? Or maybe like give Tony the Tiger stretch marks. Wouldn't that be good? <laughs> He's like, there's stripes. You're like, there's stretch marks, Tony. You're, you've been eating the shit for like 40 years, you know? I just want, what I'm saying is I want to see like a General Mills, where are they now? Wouldn't that be fun? Just have, <laughs> right? Just have the, the, the Lucky Charms leprechaun. He's now 400 pounds uh, and he only wears Guinness t-shirts for some reason. He's like, it's like a cereal in a glass, you know? 
he keeps getting arrested for telling women that he's magic titly delicious. That makes sense, <laughs> right? Yeah. Uh, I just want more real. I just want more. Maybe it's because I've in Cal- been in California too long. I want more regulation. I don't know. That was for you. <laughs> Parents' attitude is, towards food definitely has changed. When, you know, it used to be like, uh, you probably, uh, you, you know, you, you should eat all your food. And now it's like, you probably shouldn't eat all that food. You know, we like, we're getting, like, we know not to do it. I thought Vel- when I was a kid, I thought Velveeta was real cheese. That's how, that's where I was raised. I remember I would go to my friends' houses and they'd be eating craft. Remember like the powder? And I'd be like, that's disgusting. That's inferior I cheese. Do. Real cheese oh, comes from a pouch that you squeeze out like an astronaut. You know what I mean? That's what I thought it was. <laughs> As, you know, I think I still actually have some right here, like a lodge of Velveeta, right? <laughs> Doctor's like, I think it's a, is a tumor. No, no, it's Velveeta. I think it's still good. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Squeeze it out. Heat it up. All right. Um, one cool thing about, I okay, I said before I live in Los Angeles and I'm happy. The cool thing about the quarantine is I haven't had to deal with any tourists lately, which is, I don't mind, like, you know, it's a tourist city. I don't mind a tourist. I just don't like a tourist who doesn't want to be a tourist. That's all I, you know what I mean? Because a lot of people come to me, they're like, We're, we want to go where the locals go. I'm like, I don't know, Cheesecake Factory? I don't, you know what I mean? I don't know. <laughs> go to Universal. What do you, don't, you know. <laughs> I had a lo- I had a where do the locals? Where do the locals go? Cheesecake Factory. Keep up, okay. Daniel Thomas Phipps. My God! Oh, oh my God, God! Damn it! <laughs> damn it! Well, uh, you and my mom. I put you and my mom on the list for the for the later show. I can't <laughs> wait for the cake. I had a tourist ask me one time. He goes, "Where do you eat?" I go, "In my car." <laughs> <laughs> Like I want to have an authentic <laughs> LA experience. I'm like, you can come to my apartment and cry with me. I do it at three. That'd be fun. <laughs> <laughs> so far, my biggest acting role has been pretending to love LA when my family visits. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's always sunny. I'm not suicidal. I'm all doing really good, mom. It's really fun. <laughs> I did something I shouldn't say that maybe I don't know if I should admit this. I did see my family about a month ago. I know, shut up. I know. I wasn't, I, I was careful. I was very careful. I wore them. I did I told my mom, it was a little creepy. I told my mom as I walked in, I'm like, this is something you shouldn't tell your mom in any context. Like, don't worry, mom. I got tested and I'm wearing a mask. Come here, you know. <laughs> You're not supposed to, sh- you, you know, you are supposed to show your res- like testing results to people, but not your mother. Um, why not your mom going to like going home every time I go home maybe once a year or twice a year it, I feel like it's an annual review you know like at work where you have to prove that you've done things over the year like productivity <laughs> and I do mom? I treat it the same way I would a job which I just lie I just lie to them right now my <laughs> mother thinks that I'm married with three children you know what I mean she doesn't know I'm like that's going great mom no problem they're not coming to California to check on this information you know <laughs> They're not gonna do my parents are well there's why my parents are conservative and uh, what's your what's your back end uh, and uh <laughs> who's talking is that daniel thomas Fitt? yeah yeah that's me um if you wouldn't mind he's gonna play here in a second if you wouldn't mind if we'll treat it like karaoke would that be cool <laughs> 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 no, 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 we're done. We're done. <laughs> I appreciate. Thank you for getting off the train uh, and uh, joining the sh- the show. You look like an engineer, is what I'm saying. <laughs> what? You look like an engineer. You look like a, but not one that went to college. Oh yeah, you know yeah. I mean? I'm, like a, I'm on the train. <laughs> I um, I know yeah, this is a touchy train. subject, so I just want to. I'll close with this. My parents are conservative and I, uh, I, when I, I, I'm a liberal and when I became a liberal, like it was like the worst thing I possibly could have done. Like my parent, my mom goes like, are you sure you're not just gay? You know what I mean? Like it's like, the worst. you know, they make gay Republicans. Maybe you're one of those, you know, I said, I'm gay to you know? I'm like, no, it's fine. So I'm barely hanging on with my folks and <laughs> they're really, uh, my um my dad my dad sells uh giant ford pickups like these giant cars and everybody in my family drives one um 
Except for me, I drive a Prius, which is the official car of the guilty white liberal. You know what I mean? I love pulling up to it. I'm pulling up to the house like, meet, meet, save two polar bears today. And I'm like, I don't give a shit. <laughs> <laughs> I don't care. You know? I, don't know. I love driving. I do like driving the Prius to my parents' house because my dad makes me park it in the back. It's fucking fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> like, get that Bernie Sanders car out of my driveway. I don't want the neighbors thinking I'm a communist. I'm like, all right, Dad. All right. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> I did, my favorite thing about driving the Prius is that my dad loaned me the money to buy it, and I'm still paying him back. So he'll call me. He's like, hey, how's your gay car? I'm like, don't you mean our gay car? <laughs> <laughs> Why don't you tell your friends you own half a Prius? Why don't you do that? It's <laughs> On paper, you're part of the problem. Okay. Um, look, I just want this is I just want to say this. I know we're a divided country, and this is a weird time, and all this all this stuff's going on. And uh, I just want to say to people out there, and I have a lot of family members watching right now. Um, it doesn't matter what you believe. Uh, you're my family, and I will always make fun of you. You know, I'm just, that's, a, that's a promise. It doesn't matter what you do or who you give your money to. You are what I think about when I'm writing. Okay, uh, thank you so much for being on the show. Yeah, you can clap. All right, you can clap. Uh, um, oh, we, uh, so you guys remember the, the dude that was talking during my set? Not my mother, uh, there, there's several, there were several people. But I'm gonna, I'm gonna introduce the next the, uh, musical guest. He uh, came out and killed it uh, earlier, and he's going to kill it again. Put your hands together. Oh, also, can you please turn off your uh, the devices? You know what I mean? Put your hands together for Mr. Daniel Thomas Phipps. I'm clearly staying on for another few minutes. Okay, 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 okay. okay. 